Okay, and we're here now for the penultimate session of the day. Everyone having a nice time? I am. Do you know what? I've, I'm really, really loving this weekend, and I feel like I'm leaving here um, having met some really, really gorgeous people. Um, I must admit, when I read the notes for this um, next session, I thought I'd seen a typo. I was like, surely they mean doctor. And then it, the, the penny uh, dropped, and I realized, oh, dog toy. Okay. Uh, so we are going to talk about pets. Who has a pet here? <gasps> okay, so who has a dog here? Who has a cat here? I'm just trying to, right, okay, yeah, I'm a cat person. I'm just trying to gauge the audience. <laughs> I love dogs as well, though. But um, So we are going to talk about how you cope with having pets in the house because they do change the house, don't they? And, and looking at how they change your home, in fact, as well. And I have three experts here. Um, we will have coming up on your screen a, um, a live um, connection to Chloe Narina Fuller. Hi, Chloe. Unfor Hello. Unfortunately, Chloe couldn't come today because the um, train uh, company uh, couldn't assure her that there would be someone to help her onto the train. So um, we, were the, we were talking about the irony of that in a conversation earlier about disability. Um, but lovely to have you back with us again, Chloe. Chloe has two very special dogs, and you're all going to be quite jealous, I think, by the end of this session when you hear why, if you weren't here earlier. Um, and can I um, welcome onto the stage Nikki Redman from Vamoosh. Can we have a warm welcome? Sorry, Chloe, we didn't give you a pause. That's not fair, is it? And um, Dr. Adam Femi as well. Yeah. And what's your dog's name? Wren. Red. This is Red, like Lovely. the bird. So. Okay, let's put this down here. I'm loving it. We've got some props as well. We haven't had props on other on our other uh, panel sessions. Um, so first of all, I'm just let's just go through everybody. We'll start with you, Chloe. Um, is that Ted or is I can't remember you? Uh, it is not. So completely and utterly hogging the camera here is <laughs> Cinnabar, uh, Cinnamon or Cinna for short, and he is obsessed with being on my knee and oh. saying hello to everybody. Oh, he's yeah. beautiful. He's so beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so Chloe, tell us about yourself. We've probably got a different audience from earlier. So if you can tell us about yourself and um, and also about your dogs and what they do for you. Sure, yeah. So um, my name is Chloe and I travel the country with Adam here, actually. Hi, Chloe. Uh, performing, hey, Adam, uh, performing at Dogfest. And what we do there is we kind of help people see the different ways in which dogs can enrich our lives. Uh, and in my case, my dogs came into my lives because I became disabled when I was a young teenager. And um, I found it really difficult to cope. And dogs were kind of my way through that. Um, and what, what's kind of been really lovely is that the more I've taught them to help me as a disabled person, the more I've realized that actually they can help people who aren't disabled too. And I think that's something that as a society, we haven't quite um, fully explored yet. And I'm really excited too. So I have two dogs. Uh, one you can't really miss uh, <laughs> who is here. That's Sinner. And the other one is Mr. Ted. Come this way. Thank you. You're going to come say hi to good boy. No, it's just in a taking up the screen. Fair enough. Um, so they're both spaniels and they both shed like mad. Oh, really? Oh. Yes. And um, tell, tell everybody about what they do around the house as well. So like the, the diff various different things that they can do for you. Sure. So um, Mr. Ted is the fully trained one and Zinner is the one who is hopefully going to take over from him. And together they can do all sorts, really. They can get me undressed. They can pick up anything I drop. So if there's a room that's a bit messy, I can point to the thing and then point to a bucket and they will tidy those things away. <laughs> I love um, they can also <laughs> load and unload the washing machine. They can um, get me a towel if I spill something, go to the kitchen and get like a bottle of water out, go to certain cupboards and get certain cleaning items out. They're really just so brilliant. They can, oh, Ted can strip the bed. Oh, um, there's wow. so many different things that they can do. It's incredible. That's one of my worst jobs, stripping the bed. <laughs> Thank yeah. you, Chloe. Um, so, uh, Nikki, tell us uh, who you are and where do you come from? <laughs> yeah, well, I'm feeling far, uh, far inferior to Chloe and Chloe's dogs, to be honest. Um, so I'm Nikki. I run the marketing at Vamoosh, which is a range of innovative cleaning products. Our original product, our cult classic, you might want to say, is our Vamoosh Pet Hair Dissolver, which is designed for washing hairy pet bedding. So essentially, it takes all of the work away from washing your pet bedding. You just shove your pet bedding towels 
blankets into the washing machine, put a sachet of our pet head solver in the dispenser drawer, add your detergent and run the wash. And when you take out your bedding, it's hair free and your washing machine is also hair free and hygienically clean. Amazing. So it it's uses our patented um, hair dissolving technology. Um, which we also won a Queen's Award for Enterprise and Innovation this year. Amazing. So, um, yeah, it's really clever technology. Unfortunately, I can't put my name to it. <laughs> it was uh, developed by um, some clever people back at the lab at Vermouche HQ. Um, but, yeah, it's, uh, so that was our original product. And we also now have a washing machine cleaner that is designed for basically really deep cleaning your washing machine. It's the only washing machine cleaner on the market that actually dissolves hair. So um, people that have cats, um, dogs, find that hair just enters their washing machine in other ways other than via the pet bedding. So it might go on your clothes um, and you just end up with a washing machine that's got hair on the drum, um, hair on the, the door, in the rim. So, and also in the parts of your machine that you can't see in the, in the pipes and in the back, back office of the washing machine. So it really gets rid of all of that hair, um, which ensures that your washing machine can run, it, run efficiently um, and, and just ensures that the hairs don't go on to the next wash and cover your clothes in hair again. <laughs> so probably prolongs so. the longevity of, of the... Yeah, it really helps to prolong the lifespan of the machine, um, helps to prevent breakdowns, um, because clogged up hair is, is actually quite a common cause of washing machine breakdown. I'm now so. worried because I, I, I've never clean. I don't think I've ever cleaned my washing machine. I'm thinking the amount of hair <laughs> in our house with between me, my daughter, and my long-haired cat. It's like we, I need to do this. Yeah. Um, so we have our doctor here, Adam. Hello. Hello. So, hi. Yeah. Tell us a bit about yourself. So I, I feel like I'm in between sort of Chloe and, and yourself, Nikki, because Chloe's dogs are putting the washing in machine. <laughs> You're helping break the hair down, and I normally stop them chasing things like vacuum cleaners or being obsessed with a washing machine. So I'm, I'm doing dog training and behavior. That's my role. I, I, I help people every day uh, to train their dogs, pet dogs, and also to help them rehabilitate dogs and with behavioral issues. Um, so what would you say, Adam, how do pets change the way um, our homes run and, uh, and our homemaking generally? They can change our homes a lot. You know, I, I meet people that actually they live they live around their dogs sometimes. So we've got great example like Chloe, where the, truly the relationship between Chloe and her dogs is amazing. You know, um, they are helping you every day. And whereas I, I might see dogs that actually people can't leave the house because the dog has separation anxiety, for example, um, or it has an obsession maybe with a, an animal, a pet, or, um, or, or, or we have things like reactivity, dog aggression, that sort of thing. So um, they can change our lives dramatically. And if you look at, say, Chloe working with her two boys there, um, you know, you can really see when we do good foundation training. <laughs> uh, I say no, you're giving us a, giving us a nose there. Um, we, 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 get good, we, we get good results so and, and they can really hello. get the best from our dogs. And that's what we want to try and get people to see. Sorry, Chloe, were you saying something then? Oh, I just said, as soon as he can hear Adam's voice, he's so keen to say hello to him. Black. Uh, <laughs> we we work together all summer. It, remind, it reminded me a bit, I did um, this morning for my home during lockdown and my cat got on the table and stuck his bum in the, uh, in the screen. <laughs> That's all anyone could see. It was like, oh, wonderful. Um, so, I mean, you're obviously here from the from the products point of view, yeah. but I'm interested in your. Do you have Do you have pets yourself? Yes. So how does it change your approach to homemaking? Would you say? Um, quite a lot, actually. I think when I first started at Vermouche five years ago, I wasn't a pet owner. I didn't have a dog. I um, I kind of realised that there was a lot of pet hair around the house, but until I actually got a dog, didn't realise how much of a problem it is. Um, it's it just gets everywhere. I'm sure all of you agree. You, you feel like you've hoovered up and then five minutes later, the dog will shake and there'll be hair everywhere again um, and it's on your clothes. Um, so it's definitely changed my life. I think, firstly, there's a level of acceptance. You just have to accept, you know, we love these dogs. We love these cats, whatever it is. We just have to accept there is going to be some pet hair. Um, and I think that's the first stage you just have to get through. Um, and then it's just making little changes to the things you do. Um, for me, we, 
never put drinks on a table uh, this low because an energetic waggy dog will just wipe it off. It's almost like living with toddlers, really, isn't it? You've got I, I do both. I'm a, I'm a pro. <laughs> <laughs> so you, Three you're, covering, and a you're covering everything. Yeah, we're, we're uh, all over that. <laughs> so it's almost a bit like toddler proofing your house. And it's, uh, it's also it's making things easier for yourself. So when you go out for a muddy dog walk, just having a little zone when you come in to wash them down, have the towel ready to go so that they're not coming in, making everything muddy. Um, and obviously that's one of the reasons our product, our original product was developed because our co-founder um, who has a black lab um, was just getting fed up with the amount of hair in his washing machine. Every time him or his wife did a load, it was just like this hair, uh, you know, what do we do about it? So he kind of like went, went to the drawing board, got a scientist friend involved, and they actually spent 18 months in the lab developing this product, so, which no one else can uh, replicate. Um, so yeah, it's just making, looking at stuff in a slightly different way to make it a little bit easier. And yeah, the acceptance of the fact that they're there and they're going to be hairy. I think, I think as well, what I find funny is that I think, uh, particularly with dogs, I think people are almost more accepting of the mess that their dogs are going to mm. make than they are their children. <laughs> and I think we, we could kind of, it, we sort of are far more forgiving yeah, <laughs> of, you're the, right. of the pets, aren't you're right, we? Yeah. Um, what interesting you say about not putting glasses down. My cat loves, I, I'm obsessed with protein shake, I have it every day, and he, I, whenever he can, he'll hear like the shaking sound now, and I might nip off to go to Lou, I'll come back, he's come out of nowhere, and he's trying <laughs> to lick the, the protein shake, so I have to make sure that I never put it within his reach, because I can't imagine it would He'll do be very good. strong if he's oh, eating all that protein. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's true, a yeah, muscly cat. Um, so, Chloe, what, what sort of um, uh, considerations do you have to, to think about because of having dogs in your home, would you say? Um, well, much like you just said, actually. So I have two younger brothers, and um, my mum is, like, if there's dog toys everywhere, she's absolutely fine with it. But if there's kids' toys everywhere, she's like, oh, why have you not cleaned up after yourselves? So we kind of have maybe some slightly skewed standard, standards in our household. Um, but I think, generally speaking, um, just being aware, more for the cats, to be honest with you, um, that we don't leave any, any things lying around um, that could be edible. Um, Mr. Ted is incredibly good and has, on a number of occasions, rescued spare Chinese spare ribs from a cat who was eating it and then put it presented it to me, which is uh, incredible and not something that I would expect any dog to do. Um, but generally speaking, I think it's just kind of about, like you said, it's almost toddler proofing, but in a way that without any logic or reasoning, you know, there, there'll be countless things that you think won't be an issue um, and then turn out that your dog is or your cat is definitely going to gonna try and nab. I always remember um, a few years ago, I had an elderly dog who had dementia and um, she used to raid cupboards and so we blocked the cupboards with chairs thinking oh there we go you know she won't get into them now while we can't watch her um, and instead she used the chair to get up onto the kitchen top and instead um, raided the top cupboards so yeah just being mindful of the different ways that your animals might see things compared to you as a human yeah it's an interesting thing actually because i know that with plant there are some plants that you have to be ever so careful i mean adam you might be the best yeah person to answer this what um can you kind of list out the things that you can think of that people should be aware of in the home um, it, that might impact their pets yeah sure there's obviously going to be your obvious your chocolate certain plants in the garden can be toxic and house plants and there are there are very good lists of these items on uh, websites like the kennel club these sorts of big charities like dogs trust very good charities like that will, will list these but I, I, coming on from the toddler idea, what's really important is that we also understand where our animals are at, their life stages. Okay, so if we've got Ren now, who's a seven-year-old dog, Chloe mentioned with Ted, he's an older dog. Then we've got Cine, the younger dog there. And similar to us, think about my little toddlers in the, here somewhere. You know, she's at, she's at nursery school stage. If we've got a puppy or a kitten, that might maybe exploring a bit more, more likely to get in trouble in the garden if we're not watching them. Okay, eat something that's inappropriate. As our dogs get a bit older, we might have different uh, things to be thinking about in, in terms of maybe a dog being territorial at home, uh, maybe in a window or barking at a delivery man or woman. So it's important to know the type of animal we've got there, their behavior in general, should do some research, get professional maybe to help you. But I would say look at your dog's age, your cat's 
age, life stage, whatever pet you've got, it might be a parrot, and understand their behaviours because then we can make our homes suit them better. Mm. Yeah, I think fantastic. it's also important to look at the cleaning products you're using as well to ensure that there's no harmful residues left um, that, that can be harmful yeah, very, for, very important. for the animals in your house. Yeah, I mean, is that something, I guess that's something that you had to, well, not you personally, but uh, as a company, had to think about in, um, because they Absolutely. know that anyone who's buying this product is likely to have a pet. So um, yeah. tell us a bit about that. Um, so yeah, our products have been developed to ensure that there's no harmful residues left on the pet bedding after it's been washed, um, because they, it is pet bedding. <laughs> um, and I know a lot of other companies here ha do have uh, special products designed for pets to ensure that they don't get ill if, it, if they're used on surfaces and floors and things. I, w I was just going to say that we, we use a lot of um, a lot of our training in, in and around the home, as will Chloe and, and Chloe's dogs are, are much better trained in terms of the assistance field than mine will be. But you can see I've got Ren here on a bed, which would obviously go into the washing machine. Yeah. Um, we use hand mitts to dry the dogs. I showed, so, showed some of the um, in a demonstration earlier on. And we'd also use things like towels. And we get our dogs used to these at puppy school. In Hertfordshire, we have 150 dogs a week come to the school, and we are teaching owners what we expect of our modern-day dogs. And, and it's important that we set them up to win. And, for example, doing something alien like rubbing a dog down with a towel, okay? We've got to explain to our dog what we're going to do, or our cat, for example, um, and give them a chance to figure it all out and reward positively. So if we do good, good, get good foundations with our dogs or, or other animals, you can see lots of people now training uh, birds, cats, and, and, and other species too. It, it's about giving them that positive association and really giving them as much as we can within our home. And I've got a few bits here, which some of you may be familiar with, but I've got my daughter's little hoover. This is something that I'll normally, <laughs> normally have a lot, a lot of problems with with dogs. They're either scared of hoovers or they're obsessed with hoovers. And you can see with a dog like Ren, she's quite settled. So teaching dogs to settle at home is really, really important. And that's going to help us achieve a lot more around the home. So less reactivity maybe to doors, household appliances. If they're nice and calm, we can maybe bring in our, our, our um, grooming equipment. And you can see she quite enjoys that. And I can get more hair out, which means less in the home, for example. Yeah. But of course, when I if I look at the bed I've chosen here, it's also one that I can put on the floor when she's wet. It can dry up and then we can pop, pop, and pop this bed very easily in the washing machine daily or every other day. So I had a big sort of duvet type bed, maybe good when the dog's dry and in the other parts of the house, but not around that area where I'm, I'm wanting the dog to dry. Hmm. If only my cat would sleep in only one place. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You can always tell where he's been as well, because there's this little pile of fur left behind. Uh -huh. so. um, amazing. Now, Chloe, um, I, I'm just interested in how important um, assistance dogs are um, in making your home work for you, because, I mean, for, for you, they're essential, aren't they? But um, just in general. Yeah, well, I think it's interesting because obviously my dogs are assistance dogs. Um, and so I think a lot of people hold the view that assistance dogs are only for disabled people. And by definition and law, they are. But I think that we can take many aspects of that training and put them into our pet dog's life as well. Um, you know, so for me, the way in which my dogs help me around the house is crucial because it enables me to be independent. But this, we focus quite heavily on that side of things and what we should actually also be looking at is how that benefits their lives too. So my dogs are spaniels, they are working dogs, much like Adam's Labradors, they, they live to have that job. And if you're finding that your dog is struggling, you know, maybe they're hyperactive or they're, they're showing particular behavioral issues, you know, not chilling out, it may be that you're not fulfilling that need for them to work. And so while it is incredibly beneficial what my dogs do for me, what they do for me is also really beneficial for them because it gives them an outlet for that energy and that drive that they have. Amazing. I, I mean, I just that the fact that they can strip your bed, I'm still <laughs> aghast at that. Um, uh, we will um, be taking a few questions um, in a moment. I just, uh, does anyone have a question at the moment that they'd like to ask at all? Any of our panellists? Okay, well, we'll, car we'll carry on then. Um, so, Adam, how can we um, make better care for our things um, around the home with, with pets in mind? So I've bought a few things here. Now, I've got... I've got a lot of, you may have just seen what I did with Ren there, giving her a food dispensing toy. Now, I've got enrichment that we can use within the home throughout a dog's life stage. But 
big big one here for me is nice. I've got a nice little stair gate here. It's not it's often to protect the dogs from the children. Okay, so think about your layout at home and how we may have our dogs positioned or animals positioned. And this is not a negative thing for Ren. This is a very positive tool. So if Ren's eating a chew or um, having a food dispenser toy and I've got my little one this side of the gate in the living room playing, I have that safety line. Very, very important, okay? A buffer zone, I like to call it. And that we want the dogs to accept that. And, and we teach our dogs this from day one. It might start with a puppy crate, fade the puppy crate away or a safe place, as I'd call it, to this sort of gate, which I can take to an Airbnb, travel with me in the car, bring here today. Obviously, I can bring this little bed. But what I would say is, remember, we're making a lot of the unnatural natural. Chloe mentioned that there with outlet. It's very important. Ren's an older dog now. But with a young puppy, we want lots of outlet and we want to fit that within, we may live in a town environment, we might live in a country environment. So outlet may vary. And it's important that we set our day up to, to help the dog express itself, to allow it to um, perform natural behaviors, which we might not see as natural. Okay, so always oh, chewing on the, the chair legs. Okay, whereas if we use our toy box properly, we can reduce that damage to the home, for example. I'm really interested, Nikki, in, in um, the product, the Moosh, um, because it, it dissolves the hair, doesn't it? Yeah. So how does that not uh, affect the fibres of, of what you're washing? So it's designed, obviously, not to affect anything uh, synthetic or um, cotton, or it's designed only to work on pet hair. Um, and um, I have to disclaimer this section i'm not a scientist and i've just realized I've really <laughs> that I, uh, a question to throw at you so uh, <laughs> the formula is based on the fact that keratin well the formula is actually based on the fact that hair doesn't dissolve in water hair is actually incredibly strong so it's very very difficult to break it down um but what our um part of our sort of scientific discovery was um that obviously keratin in hair um is bonded together by a disulfide bond which actually is the weakest part of the keratin and if we our product actually attacks that bond so once that bond has been attacked this hair then kind of falls apart um, I always compare it to the fact that it's opposite Do you know Olaplex for your hair yeah it strengthens yeah, yeah. the bonds it regularly it's <laughs> essentially the opposite of that um, so it breaks down that um, the weak part of, of the hair and it breaks it down into tiny little pa particles so it can then easily wash away rather than getting clogged up in your pipes because actually what happens in our washing machines is you get gunk don't you you get the the bits of detergent the fabric softener the dirt the other bits of residues bits of hair and that kind of uh, makes our pipes not really flow very well um so it you know using the pet hair dissolver allows all of that to flush away Amazing. It's, uh, it's really, because uh, I've not heard of um, the idea of dissolving the hair. I've heard yeah. of Olaplex. <laughs> <laughs> Chloe, I'm interested when you go to other people's homes, how you, find, um, how you find it with the dogs. What problems do you encounter and challenges do you encounter at other people's homes? Um, well, to be honest, that doesn't tend to happen a lot because that's more of an accessibility thing for me. Um, so very few people, very few homes of the people that I know are actually accessible from a wheelchair standpoint. So um, I, I can't proclaim to know that, um, but certainly I travel an awful lot with my job and we visit many hotels and within, the, and Airbnbs in fact, and within that I have to be really mindful of kind of the, um, the, the trace that we leave behind essentially. Um, and so with them being Spaniels, they are fiends for mud. And so making sure that my dogs are okay with having their paws handled so that I can dry them off, you know, teaching them specific cues. So for example, both of my dogs know um, obviously a lie down cue, but also a cue that means, okay, now I want you to flip onto your side, which means that, that you know, they're gonna stay in that position while I can dry their paws um, and prevent any mud from being tracked in. Um, and then also as well, making sure that our dogs are happy to be groomed uh, so that we can get as much of that, that dead hair off them as possible so that they're not leaving hair behind in, um, in these places that we visit. 
Amazing, thank you. And uh, Adam, because well, um, you, you're all three of you are dog owners, aren't you? So, yes. um, well, when you've gone to other people's homes with your dog, do you take your dog? And yes. what kind of problems do you encounter? So I, I visit hundreds of homes throughout the year. So obviously with my job, going into people's places, see how their layout is with their dogs. And uh, that's one, one area of what I do. But another one, we, we've just been with, like with Chloe on the, on the six, uh, seven different dog fest uh, tours, which were very enjoyable. And we take the dogs to Airbnbs. And actually, at one point with what I say at, at each dog fest is when we're setting up our dogs at home, I, I, want, I want it to be able to go to another context with the same idea. So if I've got my tools in place at home, the stair gate, which I can bring across in the kitchen, the dogs are used to that from a puppy or this, this, uh, this type here. I've got my bed, I've got shoes, I've got toys. We can go on a walk, get some energy out of the dog. I can take those things to any base, as I would call it, and the dogs are quite happy. Because many dogs would get stressed potentially by a new situation. If they're not used to relaxing in your own home, they're not gonna do it very well in a new context. So I would say visiting people's houses, what I often see is that many dogs are um, on the sofa, on the bed. And it's not a problem. We don't mind dogs on sofas and beds, but it's that option to be able to say, Ren, do you mind moving? Because we need to change a nappy or an elderly person's coming to stay. That's when we might see there be stresses if a dog is not flexible, not tolerant. And like Chloe was saying, these Chloe's two are very, very flexible, very tolerant. They go to hotels with you. Chloe's doing loads of training, lots of effort. And, and many, of the, many of the cases I see, we may not have training. They're coming from abroad. They've not even lived in a house. We may be in a street dog. So that transition can be really, really tricky for dogs. And it's going to be our job to help them there. And I, I, if I could give any advice there, it would be really about setting your dog up whilst you're at home. Can they, can they relax away from you? You can see what Ren's doing here. So she can go into lots of situations, cafes, pubs, not just around the home. And that, that really does allow me to give her more as a, as a pet dog. Yeah, I'm, she's not looking particularly stressed at the moment. Is <laughs> no, she? no, she's quite chilled now after this time. <laughs> pretty happy, pretty happy there. Yeah, she looks yeah. how I feel. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, my goodness, if I could lie down on the stone. But just, just a quick one on there, though. But if Ren was, you know, a 12-week-old puppy here, guys, this is a different context. I might be asking too much. Um, you can see my daughter running around here like Sonic the Hedgehog. Yeah, it's, it's not, she's not going to settle like she would when she's 20, right? So thinking about where your dog's at, what your dog's capable of, and not putting them into contexts that are too intense or, or too much, okay? And that's where professional help can be very, very useful. Um, and what about you, Nikki? Have you ever take your dog to somebody else's house? What, what challenges have you come across? Um, again, I'm feeling slightly inferior because <laughs> I don't think the level of training that our dog has received is anywhere near Chloe's or Adam's. Um, but actually, our, our dog is pretty chilled. Um, I'm not sure if she'd fall asleep in this situation, but um, she's generally fairly chilled. She goes to work uh, with my husband and she knows that environment. She knows she's got a, her bed there. She knows what her little zone is at the office. Um, and she obviously comes home and knows where she sleeps. Um, and going to friends' houses, she does. She's generally okay. Um, we have had a situation which I might tap Adam up for some yeah, advice no later. Um, of some friends with dog sitting our dog, and um, they have their own dog, and I think our our dog just couldn't settle until she was absolutely exhausted. I think it was just all new, and I think actually we ha probably hadn't taken enough of her things to the friends' house in order to ensure that she was like settled. A like a child, yeah. you take toys yeah. with them and keep them occupied, don't yeah. you? If I could just say that, I was just about to say that, when we pack up uh, like Anna, our, our little one, we will take her blackout blinds, you know, her lunches and all those things. You don't really even think about that. You know, where are we going to, where is she going to sleep in the Airbnb or around the family members? So. I think when you're taking a dog away with you as well, do think about those things. Have they got other pets? Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the Airbnbs we said it had alpacas just outside the door. And these guys are quite used to livestock, so we just sort of flowed in, and I know they can cope with that. But you might find that dogs get on very well with other dogs. So at doggy daycare or um, from their uh, dog walking group. But then when you go back to their house, it can change the relationship. Resources can come up for grabs. A dog might be more interested in being territorial, like we said, in a window. Okay, and that might affect the relationship with the dog that it walked with an hour ago. Mm -hmm. Or it may be food possessive, for example, or valuing a certain toy. So it's important to think about what you're gonna walk your dog into. And I would say a lot of people are naive there, if that's, if that's okay to say. They, they mean well, we want to go around and see a friend, but it might be a, 
14 week old puppy or a street dog meeting a uh, nine year old, 10 year old dog. Okay, so Ren having a puppy stay for the weekend could be stressful with her life stage now. She's had an operation on her back a few years back. So we might not want to play um, as the guests might think. I'll bring my puppy around and they can all play. It's like me taking my daughter to maybe a care home, that situation. Yeah. Could be overwhelming. So you've got to think those things through. Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one because my mum has a dog. We have a cat. Um, they brought the dog over as a puppy. I d I d my cat's quite chilled. I really wasn't expecting a problem. And I saw a very different side to him. Yeah. Um, just went berserk. I mean, the poor dog came off worse because um, uh, she got scratched. <laughs> Um, and so we, they've never been able to bring the dog over uh, again. And uh, my husband was quite pleased about it because he's not a dog person. So he was like, great, it means that they can't bring the dog and over. And if I can just say there, when you're thinking, guys, what I was saying about here with my, my, my gate, if I was going to be introducing, we've got other pets, chickens in the garden. Um, and, and if we bought the cat, a cat or a kitten in, we would definitely be doing that intro behind the line. Yep, so the cat doesn't have to deal with the issue because Felix is just getting on with his day. And then all of a sudden, this little drunk energy plows in you know and it can be really overwhelming and of course some some cats can't maybe deal with the dog there so it's really important to give that space make the associations positive and they might not be at that level initially because uh, that can maybe ruin going forward so in your case it didn't matter cause the, the, the the dog wasn't coming back but if we had to maybe keep that animal there it can be really stressful and that's where I will help help folk with introductions and things like that but yeah try and give space make it positive and give the animals if you are introducing like that time to adjust and understand each other's species differences i would say there amazing well we're out of time but um if there are any questions from the audience i'm happy to take those but no it sounds like we've covered everything so thank you so much guys and thank you thank chloe you. so pleased you could join us good to see you chloe <laughs> thank you let's take give care. you a round of applause Right, we have one more session for the day from uh, an expert for the Feng Shui Society. Yeah. Um, that is coming up at three o'clock, so do stick around. Thank you Thank very you. much.